This is a one-size-fits-none horizontal power feed for a mill. And frankly, for my brand new PM728, one-size-fits-none isn't good enough. I've got a mill. I've got a lathe. Let's make it one-size-fits-one. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. If you're familiar with my channel, you may recognize this horizontal power feed for a mill. Several years back, I installed it on my DIY mill build. It's a very basic unit. You've got forward and reverse, you've got speed control. It came with this gear. Now this gear is specifically set up with a dog tooth and it doesn't come with any dog tooth adapters. So I don't know how many mills that actually fits. Again, one size fits none. The thing I really hate about this is the way it attaches to the bed. This piece right here has a tab across the front, and this fits down into the channel on the end of the bed. You then tighten down these bolts, and that's what holds everything in place. I think that design is poor. I think that epitomizes the one-size-fits-none philosophy. Let's just make it kind of hang there, and we'll tighten a bolt down to put it in place. So normally, this fits about like that. The first thing I don't like about this is this is a temporary connection. Now, when I say temporary connection, what I'm saying is a clamp type connection is great for something that needs to be removed. We clamp things down all the time so that we can take them back off. Once this power feed is installed, it shouldn't need to be removed. This all reminds me of something my uncle once told me. He said, never use glue when you can use nails. Never use nails when you can use screws. Never use screws when you can use bolts. And never use bolts when you can weld. Now, obviously, there is a time and a place for all of those types of fasteners. But the sentiment is, connect it in the best way possible. And using pressure to connect it to this bed is not the best way possible. Second thing I don't like about this, when this is fully installed and you have it as far over as it's supposed to be, we can't get T-nuts out this end. Now, if you've got the vise on the bed, like I do right here, you have to remove the vise or leave T-nuts in on this side all the time. And that's gonna collect chips and other things it's really nice to have access to this side to slide T-nuts in. The third thing I do not like about this design, and for me, this is the biggest one. You are losing over an inch of bed. Now, this PM728 has a fairly large bed. But the one thing that I found in the shop is no matter how big my machine tools are, they're never big enough. I will find some project that will require me to put something bigger on the bed. And I'm gonna need every inch. This right here is a hard stop, it limits. You can't hang anything off the bed and you're losing, like I said, almost an inch and a half. So that's why we're gonna ditch this bracket and we are gonna go with a one size fits one option. When I installed this on my DIY mill, I actually fabricated a bracket that took up this space and bolted to the side of the crossfeed table on that DIY build, eliminating this janky hold it in with pressure setup. I don't know who thought this one size fits none idea was a good idea. I understand why they did it. They wanted it to fit a variety of machines, but if you've got some machining skills, why not take the time and make it a solid mount? I'm actually gonna improve on my design over the DIY setup, and I'm going to completely eliminate this piece right here. The important part here is that this has slotted holes. And what that allows you to do is move this up and down and adjust the engagement between that gear right there and this gear right there. With spur gears, you want to be able to set depth. And so that is a feature that I need to retain. But I can easily make a bracket 
that has the holes to be able to use this sliding mechanism. This is not required at all. Now you may be thinking, you just bought a brand new mill and now you're gonna drill holes in it? Not at all. This type of power feed was originally designed, I believe, for a bridge port. I could be mistaken on that. And the way it was designed to be mounted was vertically. You removed the hand wheel retaining bracket, installed this, and then I believe, and I'm not 100% on this, that you could still actually even retain the hand wheel sticking out the end. If the original design of this can be set up to be installed, replacing the bracket on the side of the bed, why can't we do that in the horizontal configuration? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This is the bracket off of my PM728. I'm going to take this piece of aluminum, we're going to cut it so that it is the same size as the mounting bracket on the power feed, and then I'm going to machine five holes in it. We're going to machine the two mounting holes that attach to the bed of the mill. We're going to machine this pocket for the bearing for the lead screw, and then we're going to drill in the holes that are required to have the mounting place for these two mounting studs. It should be a really nice solid mount and should work really well. So the lead screw on my mill is not the same diameter as the hole in this dog tooth gear. There are no dog teeth anywhere and the lead screw is not actually long enough to get the gear far enough out to properly engage with the power feed. So the first thing I had to do was come up with a coupler system. And that's this right here. This coupler system, I milled in these dog teeth. It's drilled at two different sizes, one that matches this on this end, and then the smaller size that matches the lead screw on my mill. I then cut in a keyway so that I can attach this to said lead screw. And then I've just got this dowel pin that aligns everything here. That dowel pin fits nicely in place and can be snugged down with a set screw and then the dog tooth collar fits in place and it will also be held down with a set screw. I didn't show any of the machining on this because really it was pretty simple. And frankly, there are far better machinists out there than I am. I'm not here really to show you machining techniques or that kind of thing. What my channel is primarily about is the problem solving aspect of things. It's showing you how I solved the problem of having to couple this gear to the lead screw rather than showing you how I made the adapter that makes it all happen. That's the bracket that I designed to take the place of this and eliminate the one size fits none compression bracket. If we look at the back side, I have the bearing pocket machined in. I did this with a boring bar on the mill rather than trying to put this piece of aluminum on a face plate on the lathe. And then we have the two mounting bolts that the power feed attaches to. And those were threaded all the way through. Now I bet you're looking at that and going, wow, that is a really impressive area that has been milled out. It's in a nice swirl pattern, which means he obviously used a rotary table. That is absolutely gorgeous work. Well, it's not my work. The piece of aluminum that I showed you earlier in the video was a fairly large piece of aluminum that I didn't really want to cut, and I went digging through my scrap bin and I found this. It was a nice rectangular piece of aluminum with a hole in the middle and this pocket milled in. And it was close enough in size, I would have liked it to be just a hair wider, but it was close enough in size that I figured we'll go ahead and use this rather than lopping the end off of that other piece. This machining looks to me to probably be CNC. I honestly don't know. If, if it's not CNC, the operator really knew what they were doing because this is just a gorgeous swirl pattern. I can't stress enough that my channel is about how I make stuff, not the techniques I use to make stuff. There are so many really good machining channels out there. And... I'm not one to step on what someone else is already doing, and frankly, I'm not qualified. I am a really good fabricator and an okay machinist. This proves that. I can make stuff, 
but I'm not the guy that is going to show you the right way to do it. So there's my spur gear and attaching collar. I have since drilled and tapped for set screws since you saw it earlier in the video. And I basically have everything that I need to install this one size fits one power feed over on my mill. So let's see how all this goes together. All right, let's get this disassembled so that I can get these parts installed. Get in here with an Allen wrench and remove this set screw. Now let me show you something on this. Normally, see that hole right there? This comes with a locking knob, which I think is a poor design. I've come up with a way to have this be tensioned so that it's not easily moving around, but that's a different video. Stay tuned for the video that goes over all the upgrades I've done to this machine, and I'll show you how I eliminated that screw and made it tension the way it's supposed to be. Set that off to the side. We'll get in here and pop this key out. It's just ever so slightly tight. And then we will remove this cap. I will end up taking this cap and putting it in a box of spare parts for this mill. I never dispose of any of these spare parts. Who knows what's going to happen down the road. Maybe this power feed's not going to work anymore and I'm going to want to go back to manual. Or maybe if I sell it, I'm going to want to use this power feed on whatever else I buy. So I always hang on to the parts so that I can revert back to the way it came from the factory. That's the bearing. It just slid down the shaft. All right, so here we have my machined piece. And it slides down, fits over the bearing. Now, I'm sure you're looking at that. And you can see that there is a difference in height between this aluminum piece and the bed. And you're probably thinking, okay, he did that because he wants to be able to come past the bed and have that extra room. The reality of it is this piece of aluminum that I got out of the scrap bin at the salvage yard, like I said before, had this pocket milled in it and it also had this hole cut in it. And that limited the total dimension of this. If I was not using a piece of scrap aluminum and I was making this from scratch, I would have made it perfectly flush with the top of the bed. All right, just like that, we have it installed. I'm actually going to rotate the hand wheel on the bed just a little bit. These bolts are lightly tightened, but they're not snug. And I'm not noticing any extra drag or any binding, so I know that everything is lined up properly. But it is definitely a good idea to do that just to make sure that nothing is, is out of whack. You know, these holes are ever so slightly bigger than the screws, and so there is the possibility for it to be cocked one way or the other. Go ahead and tighten it down. All right, next step. Install the key. Now, the key that came out of this is a five millimeter, and I don't have any five millimeter key stock. I could buy some, but I also don't have a five millimeter brooch. Now, I do have a fairly nice Imperial broaching kit. I did a whole video and review of that. And it does have a 3 16 brooch in it. And 3 16 and 5 millimeter are almost the same. There is a little bit of, of slop side to side. And so this key is a little loose in this pocket. But that being broached at 3 16 is going to be tight on this. And once we tighten down the set screw, it is going to press it into the shaft. So I'm not worried about the fact that the key is a little on the small side. Go ahead and install my gear. Nice tight fit, but I do have the ability to adjust it in and out and get it properly lined up with the gear on this power feed. You take and slide this down over these bolts, getting the washers in the correct position. And we can get it down into place. That sound you hear is an indicator that I do not quite have the teeth engaged properly between the spur gear on the bottom and the gear that is coming out of the power feed. 
At this point, we use a soft hammer to either go down or up. Now, obviously, I need to come up a little bit. Because it's making noise, I need to decrease the contact between the teeth. Don't quite have enough tension on this bolt. I think I've got a little too much tension on this bolt. And that right there is actually pretty good. You're never going to get all the sound to go away, but you will get most of it to go away. And you definitely don't want that grinding sound that I had at the beginning. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these bolts down. So if we look under here at the teeth engagement, right now you cannot see the gear at all that is coming out of the power feed. But if I slide this over, it's a little tight. Right up in there, you can now see the tooth engagement. And you basically want it lined up and so that the face of the bigger spur gear is not rubbing against the body of the power feed. From there, it's just as simple as coming in with an Allen wrench and tightening the set screw. This one size fits none power feed did not come with a cover for this gear. And there is the potential, you know, while you're machining something, you reach under to grab something of getting your fingers into that gear. So I probably will be making a cover of some kind. With the way that I designed this bracket, it would not take much to just take a piece of aluminum and shape it to fit the underside of my bracket and bolt it in in several locations and then run it all the way to here. That way I'm never accidentally sticking my hand in there and hurting myself. But the nice thing is by doing it with two screws on each side, I will be able to easily remove it if I need to, to get in there and grease this gear or to make adjustments, that sort of thing. The grease made it a lot quieter. You are hearing the sound of the grease, but that will pass with time. Get rid of some of this excess here. So there we have the bed travel limiting switch and it is actuated by the stops that came with this machine. If I hit the stop switch underneath, stops. Didn't see the point in running the bed all the way out for you to see that. And the same thing when we go the other direction. I'm going to have to do something with this cord, clean it up a little bit. I can slow this unit way down. I don't know how it compares to 110 volt power feed units. This one's a 220 that I bought by mistake. Thankfully, I had a 220 plug right here where I set up the mill. I can only assume based on what I know about electronics and motors and such that the 221 probably is better at slower RPM than the 110, but I cannot confirm that from actual experience with one of these power feeds. And that's probably about as slow as I can go with this unit and that's very slow. Overall, I am extremely happy with this install. This is far superior to the way that I did it on my DIY mill build. And I really think that this is the way that all of these horizontal power feeds should be installed. I don't really see the point in clamping it on when it wasn't that hard to use the mill to make a bracket that allows me to bolt it directly to the bed. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.